Hi, Mike Kennedy here with you, and what's wrong with my new flash? It's a the newer 752. This had like glowing reports on it for reviews and everything. Really the only negative review was someone said they got one and it melted the front. Evidently there was something wrong with it and it overheated and they took it back and, or sent it back and it, it got replaced, so no problem there. But I guess I can tell that a lot of these people that were giving these reviews were just people who uh, certainly weren't professional photographers and, uh, you know, probably hadn't used it in a situation like a wedding or a party or something like that. And what's wrong, basically, for all this technology it has, it's, it's not powerful enough, okay? You know, there were some misprints in some of the things, and when it said guide number 58, I thought, that must be, that's too low, that must be a misprint. Well, no, that's right. So what that means is, if you have the flash on manual, and you're 10 feet away from something with an ASA 100, uh, you will need to open your lens to 5.6 to get a properly exposed picture. Well, that's kind of, that's kind of weak. Uh, normally, most flashes back in the days of film or professional, when I was doing weddings, you'd want a flash with a guide number 80 or 120 or, or more. You'd want a big flash. And why you want it is, uh, you get a problem here. Okay, you've got, with a weaker flash, you have to, have to open the lens up more. As you open the lens up more, the ambient light becomes more present in the photograph. And this creates uh, two basic problems, let's say. It creates a basic, a two exposures on top of each other, and two problems result from that. One is that you got a really kind of odd color balance, because if you're in an area with incandescent lights, you have this yellow image, and superimposed on it, you've got the uh, uh, daylight image. In other words, flashes tend to be daylight colored. So you've got this daylight, put on top of this other exposure because if we just put this on our, you know, I've got a Nikon uh, D5000 camera, we just put it on that and run it, put it on TLL, you know, through the lens, and we set the camera on auto, what we end up doing is taking these two pictures that are very close to each other in exposure, okay? Now normally, with a real powerful flash, and I'm sure if you've seen wedding photographs in the past, you would notice this, that a lot of times you'll see the main subject and the rest of the area is quite dark or even sometimes black because the flash is, the flash is so much more powerful than the ambient light. And what that does is, again, is there's only one color balance significantly there. There are two exposures, but the ambient light exposure is so low as to be uh, not meaningful. So you have this one color hitting your subject, this daylight color coming from the flash, and then it becomes very easy to get the correct colors for the person. And the other thing that's going wrong too is, I'm going to use my hands to demonstrate this. Say we, we're going to take an exposure that lasts one second long, 1000, okay? Now, I'm going to move my hand and say 1,000, okay? So the shutter is open for that entire length of time, 1,000, and it's your hand is moving, okay? The flash is an incredibly short burst, so it's maybe like at 1 1,000th one of a second or even 1 30,000th of a second. It's really, really short and intense. So what happens is you get this 1,000 exposure, and at the end here, you get the flash exposure. So what you do is you have this ghosting. If the subjects are moving and the the exposures are close enough to each other, you get this kind of ghost image and then you get the strong image where the flash was. And this basically ruins your photographs. <laughs> now, so is there a way out around it other than the fact that I bought the wrong thing? <laughs> now let's put it, you know, this was, what was this? This was was it like 60 bucks or something? And the, the Nikon flash was $350, okay? I'm sure there must have been a model of this that I could have gone up to. But really, like I say, 
the sky number of 58 or 9 or whatever it is, is way too pathetic to take any sort of professional photograph with in an area like a uh, like in a hall for a wedding or a party or something. Now, if you're you're doing things in your own house and everything, that that's not going to be a problem. So, how what can we do to rectify this problem? See, we're we're running into boundaries here too. That's the idea that this. Uh, if you have a normal DSLR, you probably have a zoom lens on it. And the thing is that these zoom lenses are really slow. This starts at 3.5 when it's in the wide angle, but by the time you put it to the, the telephoto setting, it opens up, it decreases light gathering power to be 5.6. And remember we said that the, the guide number of this was only like 59, so that means it's going to a lot of the time it's going to be at the maximum aperture of this lens which you kind of don't want be why because again you're getting that a idea of that the the two color exposures you can get the motion exposure and uh it uh your widest open settings are not the sharpest settings either it would be much better to be down at some lower settings so what can we do about this well the, the workaround I'm going to be trying and experimenting with is to go uh, into the program mode and adjust the minimum shutter speed. In other words, with this, uh, with my camera, now this is, this is an older DSLR, okay, and, and some people with newer ones, it might, it, you won't, you'll want to check so that you'll be in tune with uh, what your particular unit does. I got my instruction booklet. I should have had this uh, bookmarked before. But we want the flash sync speed. Okay, we got we get the flash, flash comes this moment, trigger range steady, sync speed 225. We're going to give you a lesson in old cameras too with this. Okay. Specifications in here. Flash sync shutter speed is uh, on this page somewhere. Uh, here it is. One two hundredth of a second or lower. Okay. Now. Let's just talk about some older cameras, throw in some history here for you. Uh, leaf shutters, the kind of shutter that has an iris that's built into the lens, would open, then close. Open to whatever number and close. So there's a moment where uh, it's completely open to whatever uh, speed it's going to be. So it becomes very easy to sync electronic flashes to lenses that have uh, shutters and uh, have a shutter that works similar to a diaphragm. Okay. Now, what doesn't work well is the shutter that basically was in all 35 millimeter cameras is the focal plane shutter, and they were two curtains. Okay, and so you set it, you set it at one thirtieth of a second. What would happen? This curtain would come, the image, the the uh, shutter would be completely open, and then this curtain would follow. But after a while, with the higher speeds, they couldn't get this to work fast enough. So what they did is they compromised in the, this shutter open and this one followed it. Well, you can see there, if you were to take a picture of me at this point with a high shutter speed, you just have this thin piece of an image and all the rest of it would be gone. And so this was your upper sync speed when the flash with the shutter was completely open. Older cameras, it was a 30th of a second, then it went up to 60th of a second, and then some cameras went up to 125, 125th of a second. But, uh, so you had to stay under that range with an electronic flash, because if it flashed so briefly, you could only flash it when the shutter was completely open, not when the shutter was moving at a higher speed and not get the whole image. So. This is going to allow us, if we put it in the program mode, 
we can set the minimum shutter speed to one two hundredth of a second. And what is that going to do? That's going to reduce some of the ambient light because what we have here is that the 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 exposure of the flash is totally determined by well how much flash it puts puts out. Yes, it, you know it's measuring that, but also the the aperture number. If we just ran this at one setting, we could get different uh, intensities on the on the uh, in the image, darker or lighter, depending on whether we open or close our lens up. Okay, and the shutter speeds, as long as we stay below that sync speed, would make no difference at all. Now with ambient light, the exact well, not the exact opposite because both come into play. But what I'm saying here with the ambient, the lower uh, you shutter speed you go, the ambient image becomes much more stronger. This light that's already in the in the situation becomes much, much stronger. So the work around here that I'm gonna be trying is with the next the next time I, and I'm gonna I'm gonna experiment a lot more before I do anything uh, for anyone again. But is to put it on program set the minimum shutter speed to one two hundredth of a second and go like that. In other words, before when I was just running it in the pure, uh, we're still going to be using the through the lens mode for measuring, but uh, in the auto it would use whatever shutter speed it wanted to based on the ambient light. So if it wanted to shoot at a thirtieth of a second it did. And that that is that was where the problem came in. So now we're going to couple them together, of course, but we're going to be telling the uh, flash, I mean the, the camera, don't ever go below one two hundredth of a second. So that, when you look at one thirtieth of a second, you have one thirtieth, one sixtieth, one uh, hundred twenty-fifth, and 250. So you've got almost three stops difference. So that's going to, if the ambient light is low enough, that's going to curtail a lot of that problem. But in fact, really, what the problem basically is that this is just too, uh, this is just too wimpy a flash. It's kind of like if I was going on a, this is the analogy I thought of. If I was going on a trip, I'm going to go on this 400 mile road trip and I have my options of buying there's a motor scooter for 800 and there's a motorcycle for 8,000. Well, I can't afford 8,000, so I buy this motor scooter. Well, I get out the motor scooter and I find out the top speed is only 45 miles per hour. So all of a sudden, I can't even go on the toll roads to get there quicker or easier because the thing can't go fast enough to hit the minimum speed to be on this, this road where the motorcycle uh, easily could do it. And that's what I guess I'm saying is, this is a scooter. <laughs> this isn't a motorcycle. Yeah, it has all these neat, fancy features. My goodness. It does these bounces. It does uh, syncing with a flash on the camera. You can get little remotes for it and stands for it. Uh, uh, do all these crazy things with this. It's kind of nice. And it's got little built-in diffusers and different things like that. And it's like, Wow, it's got a lot of technology, but it's just way underpowered. If we're looking at, if I'm saying I'm going to do this again and be smarter about it, I would have not bought anything that didn't have a guide number of hopefully uh, 100 or higher. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work, work that well because again, we're working with the limitations of uh, having these zoom lenses that have the low, the, have the slower, uh, they're slower lenses in that they let in less light. Now if we go back to a single focal length lenses, all of a sudden, so here, uh, here when I use this lens at 28, I'm going to have something like an f4 opening here. Well, look at this. This is a fixed fo focus lens. Element. It's not for this, it's for the older one, but it does fit. It's not automatic. But this lens goes to 2.8. So I've gained a whole f-stop there. But then if we go to 
what was considered the normal lens for the film format, all of a sudden I bet at 50, I've got f1.8. So that has put me up. Uh, I've gained, I go from 1.8, 2.8, 4, 5.6. So I've gained like three or four stops by going to a single focus lens. So again, we, we could get more bang out of the buck for this flash by buying a series of fixed focus lenses that have uh, larger openings. But of course, that gets expensive to buy a bunch of DSLR lenses. And, uh, you know, and now we're also keyed into the convenience of just, uh, you know, zooming in or zooming out or whatever. But so I think, in retrospect, that if you're if you're just playing around with a flash, you need a flash once in a while, then this, this flash is great. But if you're expecting to do uh, something in an area, uh, in, a, in a church, in a building, or whatever, uh, without fooling around, like maybe, like I say, fiddling with your uh, shutter speed to get it as high as you possibly can with your camera that still syncs to a flash, uh, you're going to be kind of disappointed with this. It's just not got enough oomph. You're, you're, you're out on a trip that needs a motorcycle, and you brought a scooter. So there you go. Opinions below, if you've got this flash, tell me what you think. But basically I'm saying, at least with this, a normal setup, with the zoom lenses, the DSLR, this is just uh, too uh, wimpy, too low power to really do what we want to do in a setting like that. And two, you know, someone could say, well, you can run this flash on manual and it will output as much each time. Well, yeah, you can, but then you run into the problem of the recycling time. Usually when you're in a situation where uh, you're recording something, you can't have long site recycle times. In other words, if I have to wait eight seconds for this to recycle because I've used it at a, the, its maximum power output, that's going to interfere a lot with what I'm going to be able to do. So there you go. Tell me what you think. If you use this flash uh, or one like it with a low guide number, what's the guide number of your flash if you had troubles with it? And just the idea, of, I guess I've got to say, I would rule this flash out for anyone that's ex uh, profess expecting to do something professionally with it. And it's more of an amateur flash. And if you're thinking of actually doing things where you're going to be, uh, you know, need, have a need to uh, do quick exposures, you're going to, you know, take a photograph one after another, you're going to be inside of a hall or a church or something, some type of building that's big, uh, you're not going to want this. You're going to want something with a guide number, hopefully over, over 100 for ASA 100. Uh, so there you go. Tell me what you think.